I'm joined by Dr. Ashraf Ghani, former finance minister of Afghanistan, now a senior fellow for the Brookings Institute in Washington, who ran as a candidate in the Afghan presidential elections. Dr. Ghani, very good to have you on this news hour. I know you've had your differences with Hamid Karzai. Uh, you, you quit his cabinet uh, partly because of his leadership, partly because of corruption. You ran against him in the elections. But do you agree on two points? One, that foreign troops will be there uh, for more than another decade and secondly that now has to be the time for talks oh thank it's a pleasure to be with you when it when there are issues of national interest Ahmed and Kar Ahmed Karzai and I are one and stand on a common platform I'm not willing to serve in the government but have been advising both on London and having intensive discussion with Mr. Karzai and his core ministers on how to move forward the question of how long foreign troops are needed, I think the words of the president were more nuanced. What he said was that the Afghan security institutions will need 15 years to really gain control of the country, not implying that 15 years uh, <coughs> of presence of international troops would be required. Uh, General McChrystal has put together a very good plan of action this plan is focused, it's well resourced, and it's backed. And President Obama has taken a very courageous decision to commit to increase our forces at a time when domestic factors in the United States would have argued for an opposite course. But simultaneously, Afghans and the international community both are agreed on one thing. International forces cannot be there forever and use of force alone is not sufficient to bring peace to Afghanistan. That means that we must put politics first now and search for ways and means that can bring over the alienated population, the population that was alienated precisely because of bad governance, corruption, or use of force, and to forge a set of agree internal agreements that can allow us to move forward. Dr. Ghani, that's the broad picture, but let's get down to the, the specifics of, of what you've been advising the government on. I know you favour a ceasefire. Uh, are we likely to hear any announcement about that soon? Uh, soon, no. But we should be working the, the beginning. The plan that has been announced by the government is about reconciliation, not peace yet. We must differentiate. Reconciliation is about bringing those individuals in small groups and others, whether they're clans or members of a district or others, over to the government side. Here, the resource allocation to communities to change their lives is an important way. The Afghan team that has been working on this is competent and free of corruption. Uh, well, uh, so can, 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 I just, forward. can I just ask you, you say not soon for a ceasefire, uh, but it is, is it in the minds of the government and its advisers that that could be a step in the not too distant future? All, all options are on the table. We need to consider options and then see, but formulation of options is one thing, putting them into practice is another, because it depends on the other side. And we must know that it's not one insurgency, but a series of insurgencies. And they are not unified and do not speak with a unified voice. So some will accept and come over, some uh, will come over later. We need to be patient with this process and build the process systematically. Are you sending out messages to Mullah Omar, leader of the Afghan Taliban? I'm not in touch with Mullah Omar, but there are others that have been calling. And we are all Afghans. And we need to talk the same way that I'm talking about individuals in the north or east or west of the country. We are talking across the, the length and breadth of the south and east to make sure that we hear and understand each other first, to see what are our disagreements. And are our disagreements fundamental and should involve use of force or can we settle? Ultimately, Afghanistan's conflict cannot be settled let, let, let's, let's by try, bullets. Let's try, Doctor, if we can, to establish at what level um, there is some kind of uh, approach to Mullah Omar. You say you're not doing it, but are, are P5 
people speaking on behalf of the Afghan government in touch with Mullah Omar? There are people uh, through the mediation uh, of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and His Majesty the King of Saudi uh, Arabia has been involved and others have been involved. Uh, it, this conflict is an Islamic dimension and we are delighted uh, that Saudi Arabia and the Gulf, other Gulf countries and other Islamic countries are going to be coming increasingly f forward to play an active role. We also need the engagement of China to make sure that the regional arrangements are put in place uh, to bring about a situation where use of sanctuary uh, in neighboring countries is denied to them. And, and what is the message that's going out from Saudi Arabia to Mullah Omar? That he should declare a ceasefire? Uh, no, those I'm not privy to those discussions, so I cannot comment on them. The key is that there was an article by Prince Turkey Al, Al Faisal, very significant piece in the Washington Post, that argued to differentiate between Al Qaeda and the Taliban. That Al Qaeda is the enemy, and there must be a united front against it. But that the Al that the Taliban are in a local and national issue and we must adopt other means and ways of reaching them and bringing them uh, within the fold. Are you quite hopeful about what might happen? This is a time of high risk but simultaneously a time of high rewards. Uh, we need to make sure that we have a clear sense of vision and an operational plan of action that would involve moving steadily forward and to avoid sorts of approaches that we take one step forward and three backward. Dr. Ashraf Ghani, very good to have you on the program. Clearly got uh, warm Afghan blood flowing through your veins if you can stand there in the freezing cold with no coat on. We appreciate your resilience <laughs> Thank you. and your patience. Thanks for coming on this news. We, are, we come from a resilient place <laughs> and snow is a pleasure. Good to have Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye.